What's up guys? So today we're going to be playing with Buskill again and what I'm going to be showing you how to do is to set up the Lux Header Shredder. This is a very serious option for Buskill. If you're not familiar with Buskill, it's a laptop kill cord. What that means is once you attach it to a bracelet or your belt loop, whatever it is you want to attach it to, once this magnetic connector is disconnected it's going to run any number of operations now there's even an application that comes with a built-in option that you can simply click arm and it'll either lock your screen or shut it down on the computer itself now today we're going a step further let's say you're a journalist or an activist and you're working on sensitive work or you have some other kind of work for an employer or a personal business whatever it may be you just don't want that work recoverable. Well, shutdown may not be enough. Lock the screen may not be enough. What if somebody steals your laptop from you and you're logged into various sensitive accounts, your bank account, anything else? Well, you may want to implement the Lux Header Shredder for any number of reasons. It's completely up to you. And I feel like in this day and age, it's a handy tool to have. So let's go ahead and get into it. And we're going to set up a testing script first. So what we need to do first is for the Lux Header Shredder, because it's a more advanced, more serious, more consequential action, we definitely are understanding why it's not in the app itself. And the app's super simple to use. Check out my earlier little demo on that. If you wanna try the shutdown or the lock screen, that part's super simple. This is also pretty easy. So all you have to do is run a couple commands, set up your UDEV rules, and we're gonna start with identifying our unique bus kill device. Why is that? Well, if we set up a UDEV rule, which is gonna take an action, let's go ahead and check out an example. So in this UDEV rule for the bus kill that I set up, and you're gonna use the same exact format. Now, the only thing you'll wanna change is the product. And how are we gonna grab our specific bus kill devices product ID. Well, we're going to do that by running this command here. Now, when we run this command, it's going to monitor for actual disconnects of the magnetic connector here. And so we can actually detect what our unique device can be identified by, by running that command. And now when I run that and disconnect it, we can see that it is this product here. And the product is a variable we can use to uniquely identify just the bus kill. Let's say you have another USB device attached. You certainly don't want to shred your Lux header just removing a storage device. So you want to make sure you uniquely identify the bus kill device you have. And we're going to use this right here, 90C slash 2000 slash 1100. Now let's go back over since we finished there, let's exit out of that. And we'll go back over to our rules file. So you'll go to slash etc slash udev slash rules dot d. And that's where you're going to store your buskill dot rules file. So you can name it whatever you want, but it's easy to remember. And that way, if you ever have to go back, you know exactly which file you're working on. It's the buskill one. And so we can see this example line. The top one's hashed out. That's what we'll be using later. But as a basic test, I do recommend running a very simple script something that can let you know that it's working without having to shred your Lux header to find out. So that is a tip for you. So we're gonna set up a simple script, which we have here. It runs from this location, slash user, slash local, slash bin, slash trigger.sh. And what does it do? Well, it's this is the contents of it printed out right here. So if you take a look at these lines right here, it's a very simple test command just to test our UDEV rule before we actually implement the most serious and consequential option, which is the Lux Shredder. So we'll go ahead and just see if this rule works. And it's this bottom line right here. Don't copy this top one, not yet at least. I've hashed it out, so it's not going to execute. So what we need to do once we make our UDEV rule file, which as you can see, it's only this bottom line here, and we will restart or reload the UDEV rules after we've created that file. So I've run this command right here to reload it. Now it's reloaded it. And what that means is when it gets disconnected from the magnetic connector, it's going to run that very simple script and print out test works to slash tmp slash udev.txt. So we can go ahead and disconnect it. And what it did was it just now, as long as all went well, 
you can take a look and look at that. It printed out a new line of test works. So it actually is working. So we know now that our UDEV rule works. We know that this product equals is actually the one that is exactly for our bus kill device. And it's run this very simple command script that is simply entered test works into this file here. So now that we know it works, now that we've uniquely identified our bus kill device, we can reconnect the magnetic connector. Now's for the serious part. This is where we're going to destroy everything. We're just going to destroy my whole setup here. And it's a nice hardened setup too. It's a kick secure setup, but that's another uh, subject. You can check out previous videos on that. Um, it's actually a hardened Debian operating system setup that is based on the Hunix, or Hunix is actually based on kick secure. But you can set this up on any encrypted Linux setup. So any kind of Linux operating system that has a encrypted volume, this will automatically detect it and shred the Lux header. So be very careful with the next steps that we're about to go through. So after that, you've tested it out, you've identified the bus kill uniquely, you've set up your basic example rule. Now what we need to do is download the destructive stuff. So we can do that by simply copying it from over on the bus kill page here. So you just simply copy this here, just copy it. And you can get that right at www.buzzkill.in slash lux-self-destruct. And down towards the bottom, you'll find these lines to copy. And then you will simply run them. Very simple, easy to do. Automatically saves it exactly where it needs to be. And it even makes it executable as you see chmod plus x and then the location there. So once we have that set up, we've got the right scripts we need Everything's locked in. We are ready to go. Now we can actually get to the point. Let's go ahead and edit our buskill.rules file. What we'll do is we'll simply, uh, we'll simply make that line. In fact, I'm going to hash out the old one. And then what I'm doing is this rule is the exact rule you will use as well. The only thing you may need to change is if your product is different. So remembering that command we wrote, so udev adm monitor dash dash environment dash dash udev, that is what's going to allow you to find the right product ID. And we showed that just a few moments ago. Now once you found the one for your unique bus kill device, you enter it here. That way you want to ensure that it only executes when this particular product is disconnected. And that is just pertaining to our bus kill device. And then we have it run plus equals, and then in quotes, we have slash user slash local slash bin bus kill dash self destruct dot sh. The moment of truth. Here we are. Let's go ahead and see how it works. We'll go ahead and write that file. So now we have our, you know, our bus kill. Let's go ahead and show you again. There's the line for the final self destruct. Now keep in mind, you do this right. It's only going to self-destruct when you're disconnected by the connector. If you don't want to take that chance, don't connect it. <laughs> but if you're ever in a situation where you have sensitive work and you think that it would be helpful to completely destroy everything, that's when you'll pull off something like this. So we'll go ahead and reload the rules now. All right, so there's the command. udev adm control dash dash reload. Once we reload this, now it's serious time. Now, let's just assume someone has pulled me away from my computer. Are you ready? Let's destroy this <laughs> SSD. Let's go ahead and do it. See what happens. <laughs> Didn't take long. And there we go. Obviously, no one would have time to recover anything, so that was very quick. Now, Next step, let's, let's see what happens. Let's see if I can turn it back on. You know, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll be able to turn it back on. We'll go ahead and try that next. All right, so let's see. Is it gonna load for us? Okay, come on. Waiting for encrypted source device. Oh no, whoever stole our laptop is out of luck. It looks like there is no encrypted 
source device at this time. Oh well, and you can't restore it by reconnecting it. Obviously, it is gone. At this point, it is not in a place where anyone's going to be able to recover. So there you go, guys. I hope this was useful to you. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped someone learn how to use bus kill for the self-destruct method. And um, I appreciate all you guys sharing this video. Thank you guys once again for joining for this video today. And make sure to like the video, leave a comment, let me know if you have a question on this. If you're unsure about anything you saw in the video, let me know in the comments. And if you want a bus kill, you can check it out at www.buskill.in. And there's a store over there. Uh, and I appreciate and want to send a thank you out to Michael Allfield and everyone at Buskill for letting me check out this really cool device. I think it's awesome, and I'll definitely be talking about it again. So that's how you do it, guys. That's how you set up the Lux Self-Destruct on any encrypted Linux device. You can do that on any of them. So go ahead and check it out. And uh, if you want to support my blog or my channel, you can go to bmc.link slash politictech. Appreciate all your guys' support, and, and I will see you guys soon on a video on how to protect your security and privacy. Now it's supposed to fit.